it's been so long since I've done this that I can't even hold them up any higher than this at this point. Oh my god. I used to hold up like 30 at a time. This is only like 15 max, like 13. I don't even know. God, I'm so weak. <laughs> Lifting books was literally my workout and now I don't do it anymore. Now I've lost all my muscles. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> I'm really not built for this anymore. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi, my name is Hannah. Welcome to today's video. So it's been like 84 years since I filmed a book haul, but for the first time in such a long time, I actually bought some books. So I have a book haul for you all today and I'm very, very excited to get into it. Over the past like couple of years, I have really not been buying like almost any books. I think in 2019, I bought like maybe a total of 10 books. And in 2020, I think I only bought like two books. I really didn't buy a lot at all. <laughs> and that's mostly because I've been mostly trying to buy books like after I read them. So I'm only trying to buy books that like I've read and I really liked so that my shelves can be a bit more reflective of the books that I've actually read slash enjoyed slash really want to read. So that's part of the reason I've just been buying a lot less books. Also, I was just reading so much less that like I just didn't feel like it was necessary for me to be buying books anyway. Plus, I think I've mentioned this in a couple videos before as well, but like I don't like having so much stuff. I've honestly sometimes genuinely considered getting rid of like half of my book collection. I don't think I'm gonna do that because honestly this brings me a lot of joy, but sometimes I just get very overwhelmed with the amount of things that I have. So I try to buy as little as possible, but for the past almost two years now, I've been putting off buying a lot of these books. And the other day I was just super stressed out and I was trying to avoid all of my work that was piling up and I just did not know what to do. So I stress bought seven of the books that were on my list that I needed to buy. <laughs> do I recommend shopping as a coping mechanism for your anxiety? No, but every once in a while when you're stressed out, I think it's okay to buy yourself something nice. So that is what I did. I think I bought a total of seven books myself, and then I also have a couple of books that were sent to me for PR, so I think I have about like 12 or 13 books in this book haul for you all today, and I'm very excited to get into it. But before we get any further into the video, I want to thank today's sponsor, who is what allows me to buy these books and film these hauls, and that is Function of Beauty. I've mentioned Function of Beauty multiple times on my channel before. I really love their hair care products. I use their shampoo and conditioner literally every single time I take a shower. So I'm really excited to be partnering with them again for this video. Functional Beauty offers completely customizable hair care products and all you have to do is fill out a very short quiz that lets you fill in your hair type and your hair goals and needs. Plus you can choose the color and the scent of the product so it's completely made for you and for your preferences. Since I have curly hair, my hair goals have always been about hydration, moisture, reducing frizz, and curl definition. And especially in the winter time, my hair gets super, super dry and it needs a lot of moisture. And what I love so much about the Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioner is that it gives my hair the moisture that it needs and the curl definition plus a little bit of shine, which I appreciate. I actually chose different colors this time for my shampoo and conditioner. I made them both pink because I really just wanted pink. I was in the mood for pink. And it also kind of suits like Valentine's Day since Valentine's Day is coming up. So if you're thinking about getting like a gift for someone for Valentine's Day, a customizable shampoo and conditioner would be the perfect gift for them because it's perfect for like self-care. My hair's just been so much more moisturized and so much less frizzy and a lot softer than it's been with other products that I've used in the past that typically leave my hair dry and I just like that you can change it up whenever you need to depending on how your hair changes or how your environment changes I just find that so useful plus their products are free of parabens sulfates GMOs toxins and they're 100% cruelty free and vegan so if you're interested in trying out function of beauty for yourself you can get 20% off your first set if you click the link in my description but again a huge thank you to function of beauty for sponsoring this video and without any further ado let's get into my book haul so first I'm gonna start with the books that were sent to me by different publishers and then I will get into the books that I bought myself but uh, the first one on that list is The Infinity Courts. And this was kindly sent to me by Simon & Schuster, so thank you to them. This book is yet to be released, but it's supposed to come out on April 6th. So I read the summary of this and it actually sounds super interesting. It's about this girl who's just graduated high school and she's about to attend a party for her high school graduation. However, right before she can go, she's murdered. And then she ends up in the afterlife, which she finds out has been taken over by someone who's now reigning over it named Ophelia. And she's trying to basically erase the entirety of humanity. And now our main character, Nami is trying to prevent that from happening. So it sounds really interesting. It sounds like a really fun fantasy. I love books that are set in like the world of like the dead, like someone's spirit now 
exists in like the other realm and now the book takes place in that realm. Um, I just really like that as a concept in fantasy. So this really sounds like something that I would enjoy. So I'm really intrigued by it and um, I don't know if I will read this anytime soon, but I'm definitely keeping it on my radar because um, I definitely have a feeling that I would really like this. The next book that was sent to me is Muted by Tammy Charles. I'm not sure if this is out yet because this is a finished copy, so I don't know if it's been released yet, but if it hasn't been, I will leave the date where it's supposed to be released in the description box below. But again, this is another book that I didn't know anything about, but I read the summary and it sounded really fascinating. It's about this girl named Denver who wants to become a musician, like an artist, and she ends up leaving her very small hometown to try and go make it big, and she ends up in the world of the music industry only to find out that she's being taken advantage of and there's so much that she didn't like know about it and she's kind of like stuck and now losing her own voice within that world. And I love any story that has anything to do with music or the music industry. I really like those types of contemporaries. So this sounds like something that I would actually really enjoy as well. And also completely unrelated to any of the content of this book, the cover of this, like the bare cover of this is truly so pretty. Do you see those clouds? It's so cute, I love it. Anyway, this is another book that I'm definitely keeping on my radar because it sounds like something, again, like I said, that I would really enjoy and a contemporary that I'd like. So maybe when I'm in the mood for a contemporary, I might pick this one up and give it a try. Next up, I have another fantasy book that was sent to me by Simon & Schuster, and that is Wings of Ebony by JL. This is another brand new fantasy book that I think has just been released. And it's about this girl who deeply loves her family. And one day her mother ends up being murdered and then she's taken away by her father who abandoned her as a child, only to find out that her father Father is actually a god and is part of like the world of the gods and he takes her to that world and her existence there is not allowed because she's half human half god so the gods don't like her because she's not supposed to exist. So it sounds really fascinating. It gives me a little bit of like Percy Jackson vibes because of like the demigod type of thing. Um, and it just sounds so, so good. It's also blurbed by Sabah Tahir on the back, whom as we all know, I deeply love. Um, so I feel like I would also definitely enjoy this fantasy as well. I haven't really been in the mood to read a lot of YA fantasy lately. I'm trying to just finish the series that I have been reading for a long time. But once I'm in the mood for some new YA fantasy, I think this is one that I'm definitely gonna try out because again, it sounds like something I'd really like. Plus, this is another book that has a really pretty bear cover. Just like, look at that. I love whenever they put something on the bear cover. It just makes it so nice. It's such a nice little detail. Speaking of Percy Jackson and Greek gods, I have another book here that fits in perfectly with that theme, and that is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. I feel like this has been talked about so much online recently, like everybody's been reading this and saying a lot of really good things from what I hear. To be quite honest with you, I don't know too much about what this is about. I just know that it's based off of Greek mythology and written by Alexandra Bracken. Ooh, okay based on just like the first sentence of this summary, it says, as punishment for a past rebellion, nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals. That sounds really good. That sounds really fun. <laughs> but my question is, why is Medusa on the cover? Like, is Medusa like the main character of this or is she a major character in this? Because like, I want to know. I love Medusa. I wasn't actually thinking about reading this one just because I haven't been wanting to read anything that's outside of my like main list. Also, I'm just not reading as much, but whenever I'm in the mood for something that has to do with Greek gods, which I feel like will come up pretty soon again, because I've been having this urge to reread Percy Jackson recently, um, I feel like I might decide to pick this one up whenever that happens, because I love Medusa. I love Greek mythology. I just like any kind of mythology, honestly, any world of gods. That's why Wings of Ebony also sounds really interesting to me. So yeah, I might try this out then and hopefully enjoy it. Like I said, I've been hearing just really great things about it from pretty much everyone. So I definitely think this will be another book that I will try out when I want some more fantasy outside of the fantasy I'm currently reading. <laughs> All right, and lastly, I have a poetry collection here and that is Shine Your Icy Crown by Amanda Lovelace. And this was kindly sent to me by Andrews McNeil. So thank you so much to them. I think I've read all three of Amanda's other poetry collections. It's been a while, but I do remember really liking The Witch Burns in this one, which is I think her second collection. So I am very excited to try this one out. It's been quite a while since I've read any poetry, quite honestly. Um, so whenever I'm in the mood for poetry, I'm definitely going to try picking this one up. All right, so now we get into the books that I impulse bought myself. <laughs> I say impulse bought, it really wasn't an impulse. I had this list of books that I wanted to buy for like a year, so like it really wasn't that impulsive. It was just impulsive to buy them all at once. So anyway, like I mentioned earlier, these are all, except for the exception of one, books that I've already read and books I've talked about a million times on my channel already because I've already read them. But anyway, the first book I have here is The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, which is the last book in the Truly Devious trilogy, which 
some of you told me is not going to be a trilogy anymore and apparently they're going to be more books. I don't know if it's set with like the same characters, but we're getting more books like in this world. So that's exciting. But this is the third book in that series. I talked about this and pretty much all of the other books in this haul in my books I read in 2020 video. So if you want to go watch that and hear any of my thoughts on them, I'll definitely link that on the screen so you can hear more of my in-depth thoughts because I'm not going to talk about them too much here. But yeah, this is the third book in that series. Wasn't my favorite compared to the first two, which is a trend I think you'll see in this video as well. But I still definitely enjoyed it and I'm glad to finally have the whole trilogy on my shelf. Except now it might not be a trilogy so who knows. <laughs> Next up, following the same trend, I have the third book in the Scythe trilogy, The Toll by Neil Schusterman. Can you tell that I'm just trying to complete all of the series that I hadn't finished yet? <laughs> this, like I said, is the third book in the Scythe trilogy. I deeply love this trilogy. I really, really enjoyed it. It is, in my opinion, one of the best dystopian series out there. Um, and I'm really glad to finally have this last book because I had the arc sitting on my shelf forever. And that copy is just like so unfinished. And it just like does not look nice. So now it'll be aesthetically pleasing with the whole trilogy on my shelf. Again, another book I read in 2020 and definitely enjoyed, but still just a little bit less than I enjoyed the first two books in the series. And next up we have the last book I actually finished reading, which is The King of Crows by Libba Bray, uh, the last book in the Diviners series, which again, I liked less than I liked the other books in the series. It's been a disappointing series year for me, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to talk too much about it because I do plan to talk about all the books I've read in a video kind of soonish. Once I read a few more, I've only read a couple books so far this year. But general thoughts, wasn't my favorite. Um, a little bit underwhelming, in my opinion, just too long. And I just expected more, I think, especially compared to like how much I loved the last book. I feel like this was a little bit of a letdown for me, but I am glad that the series is now concluded and it was pretty satisfying ultimately. Anyway, finally have the last book in this series. One day we will have matching hardcovers of all of these books. One day. Don't know when that will be. Hoping that the covers go back to the original first cover because that's the prettiest cover and I really don't know why they keep changing them. One of the worst cover changes in my opinion. <laughs> I still recommend you read The Diviners. I still think it's a fantastic YA series but yeah in my opinion the last book was a little bit disappointing. Next up I finally have a finished copy of one of my favorite books that I read last year which is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. Look how pretty this finished copy is. It's so nice. Also the end pages with like the snakes and I don't even know if there's anything on the cover. There isn't but it's so pretty. I know there were like a lot of special editions of these books and stuff and um, contrary to what I will show you later in this video, I'm not as into buying special editions of books as I used to be. I feel like I used to be super into getting like the prettiest edition of a book or like every special edition of any of my favorite books and now as time has gone on I feel like less and less of a need for that. There are still some that I deeply love and like want but they're like hundreds of dollars now which is absolutely Absolutely ridiculous so I'm not gonna get them but just as a general thing I feel like I care less and less about special editions of books so anyway I'm fine and happy with this one because again look how pretty it is <laughs> like I mentioned this is one of my favorite books I read last year it is the first book in a dark academia fantasy series that Lee is now writing and um, I cannot wait for the next book she like teased some stuff and said she's working on some stuff on her Instagram recently and I'm so excited like I know we're getting like all this Grisha content right now with the show coming out in a month or so. I'm excited about that but like all I want is more Ninth House content. I'm like okay with less Grisha content. I love Grisha for what it is. I don't need more. I need more of this though. I really need more of this. <laughs> Next up I have a book that I read in 2019 and never bought a copy of um, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I have mentioned this book in I think maybe one or two videos but I never made like a favorite books of 2019 video so I didn't really talk about this book very much but I love this book. I love this book so much. It was so good. I am so excited for Casey McQuiston's next book. I think it's called One Last Stop. I can't remember the title exactly but it sounds really good as well but yeah I loved this story so much. One of my favorite romances I've read. I really didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I did. It was super funny and super entertaining. I mentioned this before too but I listened to this whole audiobook with one of my friends while we were driving from Colorado to California. So it was like a really fun listening experience as well and like we now have this like shared memory and experience of reading this book. So yeah I definitely needed to get myself a copy of this because hands down one of my favorite like adult romance novels I've read. It's so good and I highly recommend you try it out if you haven't read this book yet, but I feel like everyone's read this at this point. Okay, so next I have the book that I haven't read of the books that I bought, but that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I ended up buying this UK edition of it, which I know I said earlier that I don't care about special editions. This wasn't a special edition. I just prefer the UK cover to the US cover of this one because it's so pretty. Look at the flowers and the colors. It's so nice. Also, the bear cover of this one without the dust jacket 
it is super pretty as well. Um, I still haven't read this. I promise I will read it. I'm making my way through of my list of books to read in 2021 and I've been sticking to it so far. So this will be coming up soon. My one complaint about this cover of this book, which again has nothing to do with the content of the book, is that this is not a sticker. When will they stop doing this? I truly do not understand why they do this. Why is this not a sticker? Why can't I take it off? Why would you ruin the cover art? Someone worked so hard to make this look so beautiful and then you just do this. I, just make me in charge of this, please. I'm so tired. <laughs> anyway, like I mentioned, I'm super excited to read this book. I feel like I will really enjoy it. I'm looking for another really good love story and I feel like this is one that I will definitely like. So hopefully it is. And again, I will come back to you somewhat soon with a review of this or at least mentioning it in a video in a wrap up or something because I will read it. I will read it. It's going to happen. Okay, you all yelled at me enough. I will read it. I will, I promise. <laughs> and next I have a copy of what was my second favorite book of 2020, and that is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. So I was holding up a copy of this book every time I talked about it in other videos, but that was my sister's copy. She had a copy of the book, so I was just using it for the video. So I decided to buy myself a copy, obviously, because I love it so much. And I ended up getting the paperback just because at this point, honestly, I prefer paperbacks most of the time. But yes, I've talked about this book multiple times on my channel at this point. Hands down, one of my favorite books I've ever read. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. It's such a good memoir. I highly recommend it to anyone who wants to read some nonfiction. Just read anything by Carmen Maria Machado. Like read Her Body and Other Parties as well. That one's also phenomenal. Also one of my favorite books I've ever read. And I can't wait until she publishes another book because I need more writing from her because she's just too good. It's just beautiful. Everything about her writing is so good and her storytelling ability is unmatched. So yeah, so happy I finally have this so I can add it to my shelf right next to her other book and hopefully that collection can start to grow as she writes more. And finally we're on the last book and I saved my favorite for last and this is a book that I had been meaning to buy for ever, ever since they announced that this was going to come out which I feel like was in 2019. I can't remember. Time is not something that I exist within anymore. I, I don't know what to tell you. I've been wanting this for so long ever since it was announced and I finally caved and bought it and that is the 10th anniversary special edition of Clockwork Angel. I know, can you believe that I still didn't have this? <laughs> Me like five minutes ago being like, I don't really care about special editions of books except when it's this, because this is so pretty. <laughs> I have the special edition version of City of Bones, the 10th anniversary edition, and I love that book. I think it's so pretty, the cover of it's so pretty. So when I saw this and it was like gold foil, I knew I had to have it. I love gold foil and it's perfectly fitting for this book and this story. So yeah, I'm so, so happy I have this. As you all know, this is like my favorite trilogy in existence. Um, and I am just so glad that I finally, finally have this. I know that there are so many special editions of these books coming out right now. And honestly, no, I don't really want them. I'm just glad that I have like one special version of this. That's enough for me. So yeah, I don't want too many versions of the same books anymore. It's starting to get a little bit overwhelming at this point for me. And I'm trying trying to reduce the amount of things that I'm buying, like I mentioned, but this was a little bit extra, but I'm okay with it since this is one of my favorites. But there you all have it. That is it for all of the books that I recently bought, all the books in my book haul. First book haul in like a hundred years. It's been so long. <laughs> I literally like forgot how to film a book haul. I picked up the first book and I was like, what am I supposed to talk about? I literally don't remember. I can't even remember the last time I filmed a book haul. I feel like it was in 2019. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I mentioned on this list or if you're excited to read any of them. Also, if you have any books that you really think that I should add to my collection that either I have or have not read, definitely let me know that as well. I'm curious to know. I feel like I will probably buy a few more books this year than I have in the past years just to um, make my collection more reflective of what I actually love to read and what I have read. But yeah, if you have read any of these books, please do let me know. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!